with Charlie Craddeville, New Brunswick Today. We're here uh, with our mayor of New Brunswick, Jim Cahill. Um, you have lived here your entire life. You have uh, been involved in government politics for most of your life, and you've been the mayor for 23, going on 24 years. You're running for re-election. Um, I just want to ask you, know, how did it all start? What, what made you want to get involved in uh, government and politics here? Uh, well, um, when I got out of law school, I clerked for the presiding judge of the criminal courts, uh, in Superior Court in New Jersey in Middlesex County, Judge Morris at the time. Uh, and um, uh, when I was getting near the end of my tenure uh, as a law clerk, um, I started looking for employment, like most people, when they get out of law school. And, um, <clears throat> sent resumes and applications to different places and one of them was the city of New Brunswick <clears throat> and um, uh, I sent it on to then Mayor Lynch um, and um, although he's my cousin the first time I met him was when I interviewed for the job as uh, an assistant city attorney so I became in 1980 uh, an assistant city attorney uh, I was full-time for uh, a short period of time, um, but what I saw during that 10-year period uh, that I was an assistant city attorney, how uh, government, and in particular local government, has the real ability to impact people's lives. Uh, and so um, when Mayor Lynch um, uh, indicated he was not going to run again, I thought about it. And, my family was here. Uh, I've been here. Uh, my family has been here for generations, and I said it is a uh, a, a potential opportunity that um, I can make changes for the positive for my hometown, uh, cool. and it's a unique opportunity that I'm thankful for every day. So I, I did want to ask you: you had the experience of working in the Lynch administration. Mm -hmm. um, how does how do you think that administration differs from your administration? And is there anything you miss about? the Lynch administration? Well, if, if, if I missed it, I would probably have changed to, to make it more like that. John and I are, are uh, um, different personalities, different types of leaders. Um, uh, I think we both have strengths and, and perhaps we both have some weaknesses. Uh, but the, the difference uh, uh, from how uh, we govern under, under mine uh, might simply be um, more of who you are. You have to be who you are. Um, and if you try to be something else, it doesn't, uh, um, it doesn't work. So I've never tried to emulate being, uh, while I was a big fan of JFK growing up, um, you know, the Kennedys and, and those types of things, I've never tried to be like anybody else. I try to be who I am. Uh, and if that works, so be it. If it doesn't, Nobody can say it and try it hard. So, you told me last time who your favorite president is. I want to know who's your favorite New Jersey governor. Oh. You've, you've seen a lot of different administrations come and go. Who's, who is your favorite? You know, it's, it's so many of them have had really strong. Um, um, capabilities uh, and, and bring something to the table. Um, so it's hard to quantify absolute favorite. And, and candidly, um, prior to my adult life, and I'm not necessarily a history of, mm -hmm. of the governors of the state of New Jersey as perhaps as much as I have been of the presidents of the United States. Um, but um, I, I think each one brought something to the table and continues to do so. Um, Tom Kane obviously was a, was a great governor, um, very bipartisanship uh, administration, uh, legislature at the time, um, had the advantage of a good economy. Um, I think Jim Florio was uh, smart, astute, tough, uh, made some really hard decisions, paid the price for it. Uh, but in hindsight... Fought for urban areas. Uh, for urban areas, um, he was able to, uh, on gun control and... and, and financing of education, uh, but unfortunately, you know, taxes uh, and finances and, and people rebelled and 
uh, we paid, he paid the price for it, but in hindsight I think people would say he was very good. McGreevy was a, a man of the people, um, really brought a personal touch to, to, to things. So Christine Todd Whitman, there's some financial issues that we still pay the price for today. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that was the beginning of the pension mm -hmm. uh, skimming, and, and uh, I may not be positive, but I may not be right about that, but that's when it became big. Uh, and uh, I think a large part of the pension issues that we face today is simply the result of the state not funding it. Uh, and now they throw up their hands and say, well, we have to get rid of it. Um, so, but, and carrying through, uh, Cody's been good, and, and, and Christy is, um, you certainly never have to guess where he stands on an issue. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask, how's your relationship with the governor? Um, I, I don't interact much with the governor. Uh, we, we do um, uh, spend a lot of time working with his administration on different issues, if it's economic development or roadway issues. Um, the administration um, has been responsive uh, to the needs of New Brunswick. They are, they are accessible. Uh, and um, one thing I can say about, you know, my tenure as mayor is that um, regardless of whether the administration in Trenton has been re Republican or Democrat, we've always developed a very professional relationship uh, with them and, and they have all been responsive to our needs. Cool. Um, so let me take you back to June 2nd, 2009. Um, we probably both remember it as the day when there was a very hotly contested uh, Democrat committee fight. Um, we were on opposite sides of that fight. Okay. But it was also the day when um, New Brunswick police uncovered uh, a New York Police Department uh, sort of spying operation that was okay. going on in downtown New Brunswick. I want to know, when, when did you find out about that? Charlie, and I don't remember. Well, okay. Uh, I, I don't remember. But go ahead. On, but but yeah, just you what, was your, what was your reaction to finding out that the NYPD had set up shop here and was spying largely on Muslims? Well, I think it's always, I don't know that I know the full story about what took place there. Um, I, I don't know the whys or the wherefores. I've never talked to Mayor Bloomberg about why they were here or, or the police commissioner at the time. I think any time somebody uh, is um, spying on somebody else uh, and intrudes into anybody's personal life, that as Americans we have to be uh, concerned about uh, our civil liberties. Um, but um, suffice it to say that, you know, I was pleased that the operation had ended uh, and that if there were violations, uh, of, uh, of, of people's constitutional rights that they were over with here in the city of New Brunswick, at least as far as we knew. Um, so the last time that you were elected in a general election, you pulled in about 3,800 votes. Okay. And uh, it was a city, obviously, of 50 to 60,000 people, maybe more. Um, what... Uh, what, is, what, is he, what do you do to um, work for the people who either can't vote in New Brunswick or don't vote in New Brunswick? How often do you think about those people? You do the same thing for people who vote in the city of New Brunswick and people who don't vote in the city of New Brunswick. And New Brunswick has always been um, a immigrant city. Um, it's always been a point of entry for people coming into the country throughout its 300 plus years and it doesn't matter if um, they were the Dutch, the Germans, the English, the Irish, the Italians, the African Americans, the Latinos, the Hungarians. They've all come through New Brunswick at, at some point in time and many of them choose to stay. So we don't distinguish between uh, whether or not uh, Candidly, you're here um, with a legal status or a non-legal status. Uh, our position is simply that if you are here, you are one of us. You're expected to adhere by uh, the rules and regulations of the city of New Brunswick. You're a contributing member of the city of New Brunswick, and, and, and we will treat you with all of the respect and make sure that you have all the rights that you're entitled to as a resident of, of 
the city of New Brunswick. Uh, and, and the same holds true for uh, the students who sometimes vote and sometimes don't. Uh, particularly in presidential years, they come out, um, and understandably so. Um, but we've been home to Rutgers for almost 250 years. Uh, they are very much a fabric of what makes the city tick. Uh, we are grateful that they are here. Uh, and, and we do what we can to make sure that, um, uh, that they stay here regardless of how short or long it is. And we encourage as many of them as possible to stay here uh, and make this their home. Uh, and sometimes it actually works. Uh, yeah. And um, and we try to make their stay here as as um, rewarding as it possibly can be. Okay, so I'll just uh, mention a few like ideas, policies, and you tell me whether you support them or don't, or somewhere in between. Um, so the first would be uh, regarding the immigrant community would be amnesty for um, undocumented immigrants to be able to stay here and not have to um, sort of live this you know, secret, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, general, and I'm not going to try to avoid your questions, but there, there just aren't yes and no answers to these things. I think amnesty makes a great deal of sense, but it can't be a carte blanche uh, type of amnesty that, oh, wait a minute, you're here on a given moment, and then that means everything is okay. There has to be a structure set up. There has to be um, uh, some rules and regulations as to who is eligible for amnesty and who is not. But I, I think the federal government needs to step up and make a decision. Uh, and if, if they stick, if the federal government sticks its head in the sand and says, well, we've ignored this situation for decades and decades, and oh, by the way, we're now going to ask everybody to leave and come back, and to disregard the fact that people have led lives here for decades, started families here, that there are multiple generations here of people that the federal government has said, that's okay, we're going to look the other way, but we're going to, in many instances, take advantage of the work product that these people do, that what they add to our economy, um, and uh, but now today we're going to ignore that. Um, I, I just think that that's a foolish approach. Uh, so I think uh, amnesty is is an, an absolute necessity uh, to add structure to any immigration policy that the federal government has to have, but it has to have, be an amnesty that makes sense and has specific rules and regulations that protect those that should be protected and maybe not protect those that don't need to be. Cool. How about uh, red light cameras, particularly the one in New Brunswick? Our red light camera is going to go away. Um, I'm not sold that it's a it's a great tool, um, nor am I um, uh, one of the folks that think that they're the, the worst thing that ever came aboard. Um, a lot depends upon location. A lot depends upon you know studies of whether or not it's working or not working. Um, when the one on Eastern Avenue goes, I don't see an anxiousness to uh, to to replace it either there or at another location. Okay. Um, how about decriminalizing or legalizing possession of marijuana? Um, I don't have strong feelings about it one way or the other. Um, I, I think uh, the beauty that we have in New Jersey would be to take a look at how the other states that have done it, um, how, how things have gone there. Uh, I, I, I give credit to the pioneers who are the first ones that come out of the box and say, let's just do it. Um, and uh, But I think governmentally, sometimes you have a tendency to be maybe a little bit more conservative and, and make sure that you don't make mistakes. Uh, so New Jersey will have the opportunity to look at um, uh, the, the success or lack thereof in other states that have had it uh, and can act accordingly. Um, it certainly, uh, it doesn't seem like it's turned into a nightmare uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I also think that the current policy that we have with drugs enforcement um, needs to be re-examined. Um, there, there clearly is um, at least as much failure as there is success uh, in the fight against uh, drugs. Uh, so perhaps doing things a little bit differently is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, it, it would be good to see it happen um, on a national level, um, 
so that there would uh, be a comprehensive approach and uh, people don't have to worry about what state they're in at a given time um, as to whether or not they're going to get stopped. Oh, am I going up to New Jersey Turnpike? It's okay there, but it's not okay in Delaware. Uh, I, I think that when it comes to those types of policies, they're better if they're at the, at the national level. Um, but in the absence of the national government acting, I think it's incumbent upon the states to, to, to take the lead. Um, how about uh, some of these cities that are passing laws for paid sick leave for all the workers? Yeah. Um, do, you, do you support that? I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I like the idea of, of people having paid sick leave. Um, it, it, it does make sense. But, but I do think if you have to look at the impact on the businesses as well. Uh, and um, so it, it probably makes some sense um, not just to do it for the sake of doing it, um, but perhaps putting together a coalition of folks to kick the tires on it and see what the impact is to the businesses in town. You know, obviously the large businesses, it's not an impact. Most of them probably have it. But what about the small businesses? Um, and um, do we do we discourage um, a lot of the job opportunities or some of the job opportunities that we have in town if we do something across the board? But it's definitely worth looking at. People ought not be penalized for being ill. Right. Um, by the same token, at least in the government world, um, sick leave has been something that was well-intentioned some 50, 60 years ago, um, and it became something else uh, many years later. Gotcha. Um, I want to ask about uh, the crime in New Brunswick and what you're doing about that. There's, uh, robberies are up 23%. Uh, for the first half of the year over the same period last year. Assaults are up 45%. What, what are the, um, what's being done about that? What changes can we expect to see? Um, we budgeted for 20 new cops. Um, and uh, we have one coming out of the academy, I think just the other day. Six, I believe, are in the academy right now down in South Jersey. Um, and um, we have another, actually the hiring of the next group while it's in our budget uh, may leak into the early part of next year because that's when the next academy uh, will be for us. So I think it's either January or February. So with 20 new police officers on board, that'll give us greater presence on the streets. Um, what I find is that uh, these things tend to be cyclical. Um, and uh, that the pendulum swings in both directions. And, uh, and right now that in those particular areas that we've seen a, a significant uptick uh, in those particular crimes. And they're ones where people, uh, they're easy victims uh, type of thing, particularly in a place like New Brunswick where we do have the immigrant population, we do have the student population. Uh, you know, people walking around three o'clock in the morning are more likely to be targets of a crime uh, than people walking around three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and um, unfortunately, that's the kind of city we are. We're a city where it has an active nightlife. Uh, and then unfortunately, there are people who are only too willing to, to take advantage of those folks that who might be a little bit more naive uh, um, and not as city savvy as, as folks who have been here for a while. Um, so I, I, I do want to ask, how you, uh, how important you think it is for the uh, police department to reflect the demographic makeup of the community. So the New York Times put out these numbers that the city of New Brunswick population is 27 percent uh, white, Caucasian, mm -hmm. and the police force is 70 percent white. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do, you, what, do you think it's important to, to change that, or, and what are, you, do. what are you doing? Yeah, yeah well, when we hire, we're a civil service town. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we hire, we hire off of the civil service list. Um, it is dependent upon uh, who's on the list, and you have to hire within rank order, with certain very minor exceptions. Um, and we, we recruit. Um, minority candidates I and mean, that's it we try to make sure that the pool of applicants that take the test 
um, and we encourage them to you know, go for, for training and schooling when they take the test to increase chances of success. Uh, and then when we can, we hire them. Uh, the, the numbers are better today than they ever have been before. Um, you know, it is, um, it is a, a process that takes place and we're, con we're committed to continuing to move the ball in, in, in the right direction. Um, so, after uh, it was found that there were problems with the Internal Affairs um, Division, mm -hmm. um, you created an Office of the Community Liaison, um, they were criticized for putting a person in power who uh, had a conflict of interest because she's also the city attorney. Also, your opinion. Right, you were criticized or somebody's for that, opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the, the folks who've gone to her for um, uh, getting these hearings, uh, they say that the process has been dragged out and that the, the community liaison hasn't followed the rules that were set forth. Um, do you have any plans to, to change the community liaison office or to um, revamp this, this system, or do you think it's working fine? Well, I don't know of any complaints other than the two fellows who um, have taken advantage of the um, hearing process. The community liaison officer does a lot of other things. Um, the, uh, in addition to helping to hold those hearings. Um, I don't have any immediate plans to change the community liaison uh, officer. I think uh, people may misunderstand what the community liaison's role is. The community liaison person is not an advocate for either police or for the, um, the person who um, is alleging abuse on the part of the police department. It is a person who is to serve as, the name suggests, a liaison between the police and the community. And it is to facilitate the, um, an individual's um, ability to have a hearing at which they can express what their concerns are uh, and that, if appropriate, to get it back to the police department for the police department, which is the only agency that can conduct a true internal investigation, to take additional action if and when appropriate. That's the purpose of it. Um, I know the two people who are uh, who are taking advantage of the hearing process are, are not happy with it. Um, but they're entitled to, to take whatever action they choose to take as a result of that. Uh, the process has been long and tedious, but it is one that didn't exist before, so it's one in which people are finding their way through the process, including the two individuals who are the complainants. Uh, so uh, I trust that it will be resolved in the not-too-distant future. And, you know, the, the action that um, the complainants choose to take, they're, they're welcome to do. Um, so when the uh, parking authority and Devco announced they were going to build a supermarket, they had uh, you know, promised to grow produce on the roof, and that when the fresh grocer opened, uh, it was heralded as a uh, you know sort of ending a food desert and really um, helping fight the problem of, of food insecurity. And um, you know, what are your plans to, uh, like to I guess get uh, another supermarket to come in or to? Um, address the issues of, of people not having affordable, healthy food in New Brunswick. Well, people, I mean, we have we have food stores in town, um, so um, it, it, it is not as barren um, as uh, as if we are without any supermarket. What we don't have, perhaps with the exception of uh, the food town on, on Livingston Avenue and maybe even the Bravo on George Street. Uh, but a full, full service, a 50,000 square foot supermarket is obviously a different product than what we have today, and it's one that we aspire to. Uh, we are um, soliciting and receiving and evaluating proposals uh, from supermarkets um, and in discussions with uh, multiple operators uh, as to um, opening a new supermarket at the same facility. Uh, and we are going to continue to evaluate those um, until such time as we have the product that we think we need and want and deserve. Um, I, I need to ask about the, the, the fire director. So the 
uh, fire director was involved in a crash, uh, you know, children were injured, and he was cited for careless driving, pled guilty, and fined $206. Um, I want to ask if you think that's a fair um, sentence. I'm not going to comment on it. It's a judge's discretion, um, the judiciary branch. Um, the judge felt it was appropriate based upon whatever information the judge had. It's not for me to second guess what the judge did. Okay, fair enough. Um, can you tell me, do you know how many different city vehicles the fire director has, has crashed? I don't. Okay. Can you tell me why wasn't uh, his driving privileges addressed um, after other accidents, other crashes where he was found to be at fault driving a city vehicle? We issued a statement on this, Charlie, and I'm not going to revisit the whole um, Director Rawls um, situation again, but um, when we learned of accidents with Director Rawls, we evaluated them and we either determined that those incidents um, were either not serious, uh, were not significant, uh, or were in situations where he was not at fault. Uh, and, and at that, that time, felt uh, that there was no action that needed to be taken by uh, the administration. So, are you confident in the fire director's leadership? Very much so. He's a great leader of the fire department. And uh, just on the point of um, driving records, uh, why doesn't the city check someone's driving record before they're given a, a take-home municipal vehicle? Um, Is that something you're thinking of changing? We're looking at it. Um, We've gotten conflicting information as to whether or not you can access people's driving records or not. Uh, so we've had direct communication with DMV, um, and in one instance we were told we could, in other instances we were told we can't. Um, now one of the things you can do is you can ask the applicant to uh, sign off on it, and that's one of the things we're looking at doing. Great. Um, when I say sign off on it, I mean sign off on Give permission to get it. Permission to go get the driving record. Okay. Um, and I, I guess uh, just a couple more questions. How uh, how long do you plan to serve as mayor? I mean, what's next for for Mayor Cahill? Are you going to run for an eighth term? Or are you going to Charlie? It's a long <laughs> time from now. You know, I, it's not something that I plan out. I mean, 1990 when I first ran, if you asked me, did I expect that I would still be mayor? Um, I, I probably would have said, don't think so. Um, but I, I don't go through that decision-making process until um, uh, the end of a particular term. And, and uh, right now it's just a question of making sure that we get through the current term uh, and uh, hopefully have a shot at uh, another four years of service to the city. Would you consider higher office also? Or? No. 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 I, I, you like I made, being the mayor? I made it very clear in 19... 90 when I ran and when I first came into office that I have I had then and I still have no ambition for higher office. My, my, my um, the, the reason why I do what I do is because it's the city of New Brunswick. And that's it. Um, politics um, is not a fun business. Um, you have to have a passion to put yourself through this process. Um, and my passions for the city of New Brunswick, and that's what motivates me. That's what energizes me, and that's what gives me the challenge that I look forward to every day to try to make my hometown the best it could possibly be. Um, I don't think I'd have that in any other office, uh, notwithstanding my great respect for government and all that government can do. Um, I'm not so sure I would be that good at it if, if I didn't have that same drive and passion. Understandable. Um, what What would you say is your biggest accomplishment in 23 years, and what would you say is your biggest mistake or regret? Um, let's take deal with the second one. Um, I, I I never second guess myself. Um, I make decisions based upon the absolute best information I can get at the time. Um, and if, um, so we. There's, there's no reason to say, well, if only I knew. Um, and so that's one way that you have to be able to get through the day and keep moving forward by just always focusing on the present and the future. Um, as far as the, the biggest accomplishment, 
you know, it, that's probably the, in some respects, the most difficult question to answer. Um, but it's become the easiest. It's the totality of everything that gets done. In one hand, you know, you can say having a um, multi-hundred million dollar project that's being developed that creates new housing, new jobs, you know, all the things that most governments look forward to um, it, it is a great accomplishment. By the same token, um, picking up somebody's garbage and making sure it gets picked up every time it's supposed to get picked up, like clockwork, uh, and making sure it gets properly disposed of, the basic services that government are supposed to do, um, those are just as important. And, you know, it doesn't matter if in one given day you negotiated a successful deal for the city and made tons of money. If you get brought right down to earth in two seconds when somebody calls up and says, my garbage wasn't picked up this morning, what's going on? Uh, so it's being able to um, manage all the moving parts that make up a city, of, uh, make up a city government, particularly one as complex as New Brunswick and as diverse of a community as New Brunswick and keep it moving in the right direction and hopefully uh, continuing to make it a great place that people are proud to call home. Um, I, I just want to ask a personal question um, about our newspaper. What would you say is your, you know, your biggest suggestion or, or criticism for us, and and do you have uh, a favorite favorite article or something that, that we've done? Um, it, it's not for me to say. I mean, um, but you asked for my opinion, and I'll be glad to share it with you. Um, I think any time the public can get access to additional information, it's a good thing. But I do think that those who are providing that information um, have a responsibility to make sure that it is um, balanced uh, and, and fair. Uh, and that means when people need to be criticized, they should be criticized. Uh, and when, uh, but when um, they do something that's not so bad, maybe that's to be recognized as well. Uh, so, um, New Brunswick today does some very good community interest stories, uh, and, and I think that's very important. I, I can say that when you deal with the city administration, um, your articles um, come across um, biased, prejudiced, and slanted. Um, but it's America. You're entitled to do that. You, you, you have the right of free speech, um, and whatever motivates you or whatever your purpose is uh, in doing that, it's not for me to say it's good, bad, or indifferent. It is what you feel you need to do. And uh, thank God in this country, people have the right to do those things. Um, as uh, but I, I have to wonder if, if um, in your analysis of these things, that does it undermine your ability to take your your um, media outlet to a level that you want to get it to um, if other people, and I'm not suggesting that other people have the same thoughts, it's not for me to say what they think, that, um, you know, are we getting straight information, are we getting accurate information, or are we getting something that uh, a particular writer um, has an axe to grind uh, on this one. But it, it, it's your it, it's your paper, um, it's your media outlet, um, you are entitled to do uh, whatever it is that you want to do with it, and so long as um, it is, um, it, you do it in the way that's um, not libelous or slanderous, etc. Quite frankly, it is my job to protect your ability to do that um, under the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to meet. It was a real honor to sit with you. I hope we can do it again soon. Let's see how this goes, Charlotte. All right, it was good talking to you. Thank you. Back at you.